Hey, yo, quick, someone send that invite to Mike. Yeah, I'm already working on it, man. That's my damn luck. Oh, Mike's already in here. Yo, sorry about that, Mike. We're having some technical sorry about issues. About everybody, this has only happened one other time. All right. What's up, guys? How's it going? What's going, Ryan? Go ahead, Joe. Send me that. Send me that co-host, Joe. I am. I am. Mike, sorry about that, brother. I could hear you. I knew it was gonna lag out, and nobody can hear me. (laughs) I was like, man, this is. I finally get a UFC fighter join the space. Set this all up. (laughs) That's cool. I get it. I've done uh, some podcasts with some kids that use uh, Instagram Live to make a video, and it's so laggy and just as unstable, huh? Yeah, it's always, every time. I try to give them tips and pointers, but they're kids. But it's cool. Yeah, I've got so many devices going out here. Man, uh, I want to let Wes get back in here. He was the one with the uh, question there. And then hopefully everybody else pile right back in. Um, anyways, you were telling us about how you grew up kind of as a smaller kid. Um, I I was listening to you and then it cut out for me. If you could kind of pick up from there, that would be cool. And then I'll hop in with some questions I had wrote after that. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I, like I said, grew up as a a small kid, very small, like a tiny, like underdeveloped kid, super smart, nerdy kid. I picked on all the time. And, uh, I just, like I said, I wanted to stop bullying. I just wanted bullies to leave me alone. I got into boxing um, initially because of the bullying. I was I just got into high school. I figured I would be – this is like a new year. I get to start over in, in high school, and it's just kept going. So I asked Kevin Rooney uh, to teach me how to box, and he said he would teach me for free as long as I don't fight. That was good. Not like, like fight in the street. He wanted me to box so bad. Um, I guess that's a there, pretty cool deal yeah, from there. I, um, just, I kept going. That's all. So I read and I, you know, like I'm reading Wikipedia and stuff for some of this, you know, I'll be honest <laughs> with you. So like I read that you were born and raised in New York. Yeah. Okay. So how did you end up down at Pete's? Uh, Pete White. Yeah. How did you end up down at that gym? Pete White's boxing and MMA, I believe is yeah. the proper name of the gym. Yeah, I, so, I've read it eight times, so I just shortened it, you know. But. <laughs> uh, I, I was um, I finished college in New York, and I decided after that I wanted to try and do more in my MMA career, and just like you know, do some more fights because I had nine at the time when I left New York. I had nine fights, nine amateur fights. I moved down here and couldn't get a fight for like. A year and a half, and I met Pete, and Pete got me a fight. So, okay, so you just kind of met him after you moved down to Florida. Yeah. Okay, and so um, I see Wes with his hand up. I'm going to kick it back to him, but I wanted to know something I was curious about. So, like, you know, everybody, at least I think most of us here, MMA in here, Florida, we think ATT, right? Like big, huge gym over there. Yeah. Do you ever? go over there to train at all um, I, I was there for two years okay um what are the why pete's instead like why why well, pete's i left i left instead? pete's as well I, i'm currently at fusion xl really so none of this stuff is up to date huh i guess not <laughs> i was on three websites man everybody says you're at pete white's okay i can i can fill you in um i came down here and i started at team nogara uh what back when they still had it open in orlando I trained with the Petrucci brothers. Um, I was nine to know as an amateur trainer there. Then uh, I went with Pete White. No, no, no. I went to American Top Team in Longwood. Trained there with Jose Figueroa. He was a he had potential to be in the UFC. I don't know why he stopped. But then at an event, I met Pete at one of the fighting events. So then I stayed with Pete. Pete kind of honed in on my boxing. Never, really, nothing really more than boxing. No wrestling. No, no anything like that. And 
then uh, after the fight with Sadiq, because me and Pete had, ah, I kid you not, 15 fights. And I didn't lose any. I won all 15. So once I fought Sadiq and I lost, I kind of blamed my situation, like my area, my gym, uh, the people that I was surrounded with that didn't know how to do MMA. It was all boxing. So I left and went down south, moved to American Top Team Coconut Creek. Or I trained there for two years and left there because it's too mainstream. There's just so many names, uh, so many names. So I have I had a fight coming up with Mason Jones, and I swear I didn't work with anybody. I didn't. I had no focus because Dustin was also fighting. So they're just focused on Dustin and this and that. So it just didn't seem like a gym where I was going to advance. So I came back up to Orlando. And now I train at Fusion XL with uh, Mike Perry and Jacare Sosa, Leota Machida, Phil Rowe, uh, Rodolfo Vieira, Hannah Goldie. We all train at this gym. Man, that's uh, that's pretty kick ass. Yeah, that's right? one of the uh, the big up and coming ones as well too. That I remember them talking about that the amount of talent that's kind of pulling there and all building together. It's, it's a pretty strong roster over there. We kind of destroy everyone that comes to visit. <laughs> Yeah, y'all's coach, he was supposed to be uh, – what's, what's his name? Yeah, Julian he was Williams. He a highly he's, touted prospect. He's 11-1 and one as a Is pro. Is he still fighting? He's not fighting anymore because of his age. I guess he doesn't – he said he's uh, – what is he, 39? Really? Is he that old? Is he, like, uh, I, I didn't know about, about like, how big of a prospect he was and like he was like the, the full package. Uh, he's, he's super good. Wes, go ahead, bud. I love me some Hannah Goldie. I'll say that. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> Mike, um, so I'm, I have a question, though, even more. So you were saying, like, growing up, like, you were kind of, like, picked on a bit. Like, do you have, like, any stories in regards to that? Like, what actually brought that on? Like, was it, like, the area? Like, was it, like, a racial kind of thing? Like, I'm a black guy myself, so I'm just curious. Like, how was that even in itself? Like, what brought um, uh let me, let me trip back. Let's see. So in high school, it was um, it was the, the big dudes, the, the kids that definitely got held back a couple of years and massive size. <laughs> the, I, I was um, young. I, I was very smart. So I graduated very, at 16. I graduated high school. So I was always small, even going into high school. You know, I was, I think I was 14 when I went into high school and I graduated at 16. Um, I got picked up by my nipples and like, <laughs> this is terrible. Uh, they like closed me off. They would tip the, the um, lunchroom, like coffee or not coffee, the lunchroom table and trap me in a corner for the whole lunchroom and throw food at me it isn't bad. I just didn't want to be picked on anymore. I'd sit on the bus. Nobody would let me sit down on the bus. They'd make me sit in the middle on the floor. You run into so, any of them guys since? Have you ran into one of them and been like, all right, now, motherfucker? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so did you did you pick it up before school ended? Yes, training, yeah. Okay, so, all right, so that fills that gap there. I was, I was it, in it was and, a I was direct. In and out. It was a direct response, though. Like, you had a problem and you understood, I need to go figure out how I can handle this situation. And yeah. Handle this situation. That's but pretty awesome. Once, once I started training, people kind of um, – there's another boxer who's Victor. I don't know what happened to him. But he, he stood up for me, not, in like, defending-wise, fighting, but telling people that I'm really good boxer and that I'm, I'm learning and doing really well. And it gave me kind of – a small group of friends who also follow into boxing and it gave me like a, a little bit of encouragement. Nice. Very nice. Um, all right. So I'm not going to lie. I watched all your fights after you said you would come, bro. Everything you've done in the UFC. I went and highlighted some other stuff. Like I had already watched you just a few months ago and I knew who you were, but I'm like, I'm going to watch it all. So I did. <laughs> Cause that's who I am, um, man. So I don't want to be burned or nothing, but like you've only got a couple losses, man. 
and they are two two people. losses ever in my life. Yeah, I know. I seen it. <laughs> um, and they are two people still in the promotion, and they are two people that like uh, you know, them guys are obviously Kamaru or uh, Gilbert is. He's he's up there in the rankings, and uh, we all think pretty highly of Sadiq around here as a fighter. So we don't take anything away on them losses. But uh, how important are those rematches to get back to? Or is that not something that that you think about, or is it something that like when you sit um, back by yourself, you're like, man, I'm gonna get Gilbert back one day. <laughs> um, Gilbert comes up to my gym sometimes. I I'm never there when he comes. I'm always traveling, but. I'll get him back in the gym. I don't think I ever want to go up to welterweight and try to make a run at welterweight. Because I train with, like, Phil and just feeling how long he is. And, I mean, I'm strong. I can, I can hold my own. But, my God, I train with some welterweights that just can manhandle me. They can just lift me, like, move me with their arm. And I was like, how, how am I even going to compete in the welterweight division? Yeah, then, uh, that's... as when it comes to featherweight, I don't know how Sadiq still makes featherweight, but I don't, I don't know, because I like Lloyd and I like uh, Sadiq too. Like for our last fight, we both fought on the same card and we hung out a bit. I don't really care for rematches since those fights were more like development fights for me, where I would learn and I got to understand the errors in my game and what it means to be an MMA fighter. Not against Gilbert. Gilbert, I was just, it was kind of like starstruck. I was first time in the UFC, too many lights, too many people. I wasn't I wasn't ready to take that on the short notice. But got me in the UFC. <laughs> so I see Trace with the hand up, but because this kind of tails off that. And I, did, I thought of this. I didn't, bro, I type out a huge thing for our space every week. And I didn't type this one, but I thought it a few times. So like looking back, bigger i mean bigger to take in like to deal with the fact that you were standing there about to walk out what what is bigger um the contender series or your first walk in the ufc after you've already done the contender series the ufc is way way more fighting in the contender series is like you're i don't know because it's a small building you get not many people are in there, so it's kind of like you're walking into a cage at your personal gym and you're sparring hard with your teammate. That's what it feels like. Yeah, that's what it looks like it feels like. Like, uh, we've talked about that, Like, and I've heard fighters, other fighters talk about that, how it, yeah. how it has that feel. It doesn't give you that pressure. No, but then the UFC, I mean, there's so – the booze, the chants, then you have – a million, so many lights, so many cameras. Uh, people are on you all the time. They're watching you all the time. Uh, you can't do anything without a person next to you. Uh, they're constantly asking you for videos, constantly asking you to move here, do this. It's just a lot. Yeah, it seems like it would be a lot to keep up with, especially if you haven't done it before. Trace, go ahead, bud. Yeah, Um. so first off, on short notice against Dillard Burns is is tough for the best of them. And on your UFC debut, that was just like a lot for anybody. So, I mean, like, your years game as they come, you're fun, you're exciting fighter, man. And I'm a, I'm a huge fan. But I actually have a, I have a two-part question for you. Um, what was one of the biggest differences in competition quality since leaving the regional scene for the UFC? Competition quality. Like what's uh, what is what did you notice more about the guys in the UFC that wasn't so noticeable or wasn't as big of a problem outside of the UFC? Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> outside of the UFC, nobody really has a grappling game because I come from more. I I do come from boxing, but my grappling is what brought me all the way up. And in in the UFC. The people that I've been able to take down, even even uh, the last opponent, they're just very well rounded at at defense. Because um, Vicheslav didn't come from grappling or wrestling, he, but he still could defend all my chokes, just defend any kind of uh, 
submission that I threw up real quick. I only, I only threw up like three or four, but I was more in there to ground and pound. But still, the, right, the so Drake comes from Alpha Male, who, who's, who's yeah. mostly known for their wrestling and, and their choke defenses, and honestly. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah, they, they, it's very good. Very and good. The, uh, the second part of that question was, um, how does someone prepare differently for that level of competition? Like, what is something that you've changed that wasn't as big of a problem for you back then that you're having to, to take in to make the, the adjustments that you need for every fight? Um, I made it the first time I, when I fought Sadiq, I knew that I needed to be cardiovascular. Like my cardio had to be on point. And that's one thing that's the biggest, the biggest like problem in the UFC is you need to have cardio to go three rounds, a hundred percent. And that is very hard to do in the regional scene. I felt, especially when I got to like. Like two and zero, oh, I felt untouchable by people. So I didn't really do cardio. I just mo- mostly worked on pad work and, and stuff like that. Just training normally. Now I I know that when I'm in a fight, I need to be doing cardio like once or twice a week. I need to do lifting once or twice a week. I need to train twice a day, and it's a lot. It makes it feel more like a job being in the UFC. So, Wes, I see you, bud. I'm going to get a quick one in and then slide it over to you. So, I got just, bro, I I haven't talked to fighters, you know, at that level before, at your level before. And I have a lot, I have a thousand questions, bro. I'm a yeah, doctor. I got answers. But, but uh, so something I've always wondered, like, I mean, it's obvious to say, well, yeah, of course. But gym tendencies, if you're fighting a guy or sparring a guy from a certain gym, do you know that he will have certain tendencies that maybe he won't even realize because it's just so uniform what another gym does? And I'm like, are you able to pick those things up? Like, okay, I know all these guys are going to throw that right the same way, or oh, yeah. all these guys shoot the double leg the same exact way. Like, is that something you pick up as a fighter? No, my coaches do. I, I mean, me as a fighter, uh, me personally as a fighter, I don't, really look at my opponents because if I am to sit down and be like, okay, I'm fighting such and such on this day. Let me look at his fights. I'm only going to see highlights. I'm only going to see him beating the crap out of other people. And it's going to discourage me. It's going to make me feel weird. It's going to make me feel like I have a hard way, hard fight coming up. So I let my coaches kind of look at it. They'll tell me small things during training. They'll be like, okay, so I looked at your your opponent. I looked to see what he does. He does this, 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 and this. So we're going to work on these things uh, throughout the camp and we'll probably have you working with such and such and such and such because they, like, resemble him in length and height and skill set. And so when it comes to knowing how an entire gym trains, uh, no, I don't think – I don't think every fighter is the same because some people will stick to the roots. So have you have you gone with anybody from like ATT, like even in sparring, for example, because you said you spent two years there All and they do things that you just you're prepared for them to do or like you, you felt it so many times already before, even if you didn't spar with that guy before, like it's just natural for you to to do that with that guy because you spent two years down there um, from American Top Team. Yeah, re- the the way they wrestle is very similar because they're all under Steve Mako. They've been under Steve Mako for so long that even I kind of understand the wrestling and wrestle a little bit through the methods that he taught. But the the, rest, the wrestling and the leg kicks they they do tend to uh, attack your calf. All of them. See, so you do pick it up. That's what I'm talking about. Like you just threw it out there. You said the leg kicks. See. So you do know. You do know. Uh, Wes, go ahead, bud. So I basically have like just three I want to get out, three quick questions. So first and foremost, like when it pertains to the boxing aspect, like what was the hardest thing to do, like kind of like mixing in coming from boxing to MMA? 
And also, like, what do you think is one of the biggest, like, misconceptions, like, between the two? Like, because, you know, people are often, like, always, like, arguing over boxing, MMA, boxing, MMA, which is better. What do you think is one of, like, the biggest misconceptions between the two? Um, mm, hmm. Okay, first first part of the question is uh, transferring over to MMA was – uh, not difficult because I was doing wrestling and boxing at the same time while I was in high school. So when it came to MMA, I just opened up my stance a little bit and then boxed and did everything the same. What I had to make a transition after the Sadiq fight because uh, I definitely uh, lead foot heavy. I was. I'm not anymore. But I, had to, I knew like these things will come as I progress in the sport. I'll learn and I'll change some stuff. And then, uh, misconception. Let me see. Let me see. Um, you got an example of what you mean by misconception, Wes? I, I like, would say, like, the differences, what makes them different, or like an opinion kind of that people think about boxing. I would say that boxing, people say boxing is harder and I would probably I would probably doubt that only because you do train harder because you do more rounds but the rounds are a lot shorter you are only protecting your body and your head very easy to kind of see those punches coming it, and if even if it's not easy you have a very small area you have to defend when it comes to MMA I have to not only defend my body my head my legs I have to worry about you randomly shooting on me, like out of thin air, no no intention of shooting, and all of a sudden you're shooting, trying to submit me, using your elbows, your knees, kicking. So it's a, it's a lot more to focus on. You really Your brain has to be engaged when you're doing MMA. And boxing, you can just watch your opponent and swing. I had, I had kind of felt that, like, on the outside looking in, I had kind of thought that. I know myself and the host, we had a conversation <laughs> about that before, and that's one of the things I was saying. They definitely uh, hit harder in boxing, though. Hmm. Okay. And this is you the think last it's, question uh, I had. Oh, sorry, Joe. I, 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 I didn't mean to hit you, Wes, but this is something we've actually talked about. So, like, do you think that that is a – when you say they hit harder in boxing, do you think that that is, like, a trained strength, or do you mean because of precision? It has to be both. I just feel like like you're only working on your hands. So you're, the rest of your body is focused on driving energy into your hands. You're going to get harder, yeah. Very nice answer. Uh, man, we got a couple of them up, but I only asked for a little bit of his time. So bang these out, boys. Uh, Rhino, you're next. Well, I'll make it short and sweet. Uh, this decision shit, what do you think is a good idea that we need to oh start talking about? I mean, <laughs> I, I've been watching this stuff since I was a kid, and I, I think the biggest problem with uh, judging is that everybody judges around different, and it's hard to – I mean, we can read that rule book three million times, and we're still going to judge fights differently, but, like, what do they need to do in the future? Live scoring? Open we, we, we talked about that before. Um, live scoring would definitely make make an idea to know the fighters will know if they won a round. The people will know who won the round. Um, I like it. I know it's in, uh, I think, in Kansas. I wrote an article a while back about it where Kansas was the first, uh, like their athletic organization set it up. And the argument of, like, if you won the first two rounds, you wouldn't try in the uh, third round was – like completely null and void because majority of the times they still won the last round. They didn't like completely quit. And then the argument yeah. was understanding that if you did do that, the other guy could end up getting a 10, eight round. So they were trying to push if someone's going to stall on the last one and they're not doing anything, then to push the mm -hmm. 10, eight, make you lose your fight and get a draw because you weren't doing anything for a finish. I mean, I, I like it. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan. The only thing I hear about it is open scoring systems uh, to the betting companies. They don't like that shit because now 
We won't all be oh, stupid. Oh yeah, bro. Diabetic. MGM's gonna fucking. Uh, they will. They will send politicians. They will. They will send yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I think is the big <laughs> setback. I, they, I mean, yeah, they, bro. Vegas will. They will campaign to stop that forever. Trace, I think you were next, bro. Go ahead. Yeah, I have two two short little questions. Um, yeah, Mike. So, uh, do you have anything lined up? Like, uh, are you looking to fight soon? I'm honestly not. Uh, I'm moving. I'm I'm busy like moving. I am kind of focused. I'm I'm just. I don't know how to explain it. I'm in a weird place with myself right now, and I oh, feel. Okay. And I'm like, I mean, sure, I'm I'm a fighter, and I and I know I'm good. I, I know I believe that. But fighting isn't what I wake up with the passion to do. I'm good at it. I learned how to make money from it. And it sets me up. Like, I'm I'm free. I don't have to work 9 to 5 because I fight one time a year and I have the amount of money I would have made working 9 to 5, 40 hours a week. I don't – I mean, I, I, I like that freedom part, but I hate fighting. Like, I just hate – the idea of like getting locked in a cage, trying to hurt and kill some guy. <laughs> it's like, I hate it. But well, um, my actual, my other question actually kind of feeds off of that. Um, these last two fights you have gone to decisions, but they've been wars. And despite what you say about not liking to hurt people, I mean, you do some damage and you're very good at it. I know that's not something that you might want to glorify or anything like that with the way you feel about it. But Thomas Gifford, that dude, <laughs> would not go down like, no, I know. What, like what, are your, all, what are your thoughts like what's going through if, your mind if you look at all the fights i've had in the ufc they've all been very very hard whether it was one-sided or not the sadiq was hard it was like the hard one of the harder fights i've had gilbert burns is just gilbert burns period <laughs> yeah top five well uh, top three well, yeah in the world thomas like, gifford yeah, no big deal thomas gifford wouldn't would not stop. I didn't understand. He just wouldn't stop. Uh, Mason Jones, the same. Mason Jones is worse than Thomas Gifford because he, he can f- fight and come forward the whole time. But he wouldn't stop. And then this last guy just wouldn't quit. Because all of them, they're all wars. I've had nothing but hard fights. So I'm just, I'm ready for my, my little scrub fight. Yeah, I don't think you'll find anybody here that's going to argue against <laughs> you on that, brother. Go ahead. Uh, I think it was Marin that had his hand up next. Definitely Marin. Yeah, I mean, well, th- that's good that you that you made some points. What's up, Mike? It's Marin over here. Just uh, there's a point that you made where my question was going to be related to that. Where um, I'm looking to like stop. So I like watching the sport and everything, but I kind of want to get into it to see what it feels. And there's like many gyms around, and I was just going to ask you like if you had any tips on like like getting started or what you call it or like. How does your body or your mind react to, like, getting hit and everything? I know that you just said that, obviously, like, you don't like it, and it's <clears> probably <throat> one of the worst feelings. But no, yeah. I, I love training. I, I love – my passion for this sport comes from me waking up, going to the gym where all my friends are. We learn stuff. We have fun. We fight each other. Um, it's That's so much fun to me. That, that's what I, I live for. It's just the the idea of locking myself into a cage – and like human cockfighting is, oh, yeah, I, I, and it's not bad. I Beautiful. Mean, I, I, mean, I do. I do I what agree, I have to do. <laughs> I agree with you. I mean, obviously, like, I mean, I like going to the gym and working out. Sometimes, if I don't have nothing to, do, I just go out to, to run to the park or something. Yeah. I like working out, staying fit. I mean, I'm okay with all that. Like, like Robert Whitaker when he said in the, I saw this one piece on Instagram where he told the young kid to to just train hard. And I mean, if you love to work out, you love it. But I mean, like, you 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 know, like sparring, like Muay Thai, boxing. Like, yeah. getting, you know, like I've never gotten into fights myself. Like you're saying, so, like, I haven't been as smart as you, but like, I mean, I've been one of the like smart kids. So, and so I've always stuck to myself. So I've never been into fights like that, like street fights, nothing like that. So I still don't know. So I kind of want to feel that feeling and see like, what I happens, would, especially from, I would do it because MMA teaches you the, the, like, the most discipline you could ever learn in life. Especially if you stick to it, you're going to get hurt. And there's going to be something in your head that's going to make you want to go train more or continue training even while you're hurt. Like people do it all the time. I do it all the time. Um, 
it's something it's something you will never experience because it's just a one percent of the world it is going to take a long time to get used to being hit in the face because it took me my entire amateur career and even like the first two or three fights in my pro career i was terrified of being hit um i got over my fear of being punched in the face by boxing sparring it's pure nothing boxing just boxing because i knew i was going to get hit in the face in boxing so every time i spar my goal was to move a little more a little more and stop getting hit in the face defend better stop getting hit in the face and after i kid you maybe 30 40 000 rounds of boxing i'm finally probably even more than that i'm finally not afraid of getting hit okay so just have one last question. I mean, just follow up with that. I don't want to interrupt or take from what's time, but just a quick question. Um, so what would you suggest would be like the good way of starting? Because uh, there's a, a good amount of gyms around like, around like my house and there's like Muay Thai along with Jiu Jitsu. They probably do the same. And then there's a whole like boxing gym, but they mostly do it by their own. So what is like your opinion? I mean, since you came from boxing. I, yeah, I came from boxing, but it depends on what you want to do. If you want to, be a boxer then go to boxing but if you're trying to do mma i would probably start with jujitsu because uh i i said this before starting with something that you can get people to the ground will be the successor in a fight because as a wrestler myself um i consider myself more of a wrestler i i can close my eyes if i don't know how to strike i can close my eyes or i can look at you and i can swing i can make a fist and swing as hard as i can I'm never going to be never going to be afraid of you shooting on me because you're never going to take me down because I, I'm pride myself in my wrestling. But a striker can't do that. A striker can't. If you're getting outstruck and you only know how to strike, you're done. Like you're just going to get beat up. But if I'm not a, if I'm a wrestler and I'm getting outstruck, I'm taking you into deep water. I'm going to win. I would always start with wrestling or grappling first. For sure. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. Mar Marin, you better keep us updated on lessons. You asked him that shit. You better go do it now. I'm going to send him a check. <laughs> I'm going to send him a message if you don't tell us. That's, doing that's it. where it all started. It started like after New Year's. My friends always say that I always like know some insight or like I like watching UFC and I always tell them, oh, like they're going for these hooks on jujitsu and everything. But I've never done it, so got to do it, you know. Go ahead, Will. I want the tape. Will. Yeah. What's up, Mike? Great performance last time out. I just wanted to know. How do you choose or how do you know what your walkout song is going to be? Do you factor in the crowd or like, how do you choose that? No, that's just like your entire preference. I know like some people come out to happy songs, just songs that make them feel like good inside. A lot of people will come out to songs that kind of ramp them up. Like people play heavy metal at the gym. Some people, that's what they come out to. That's the same kind of concept there. I like to feel good. I like to feel happy. I'm never I'm never mad. I never have any like hate towards anybody. So uh the last two times I fought I came out to um Alive by Five and it's just it feels good to be alive, that's all. Gotcha, that's what's up. All right. Uh Trace, I'm gonna let you get one and then I'm gonna ask the last question or two and uh because I only asked Mike for about a half hour of his time. I don't want to have to have him tell us. Oh, you're good? Well, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Well, I got oh, this, wonderful, isn't, wonderful. this isn't my question, Mike, but uh, if you don't have anything going on, would you like to hang out and uh, break down some fights with us later? Ooh, if you're not busy. <laughs> um, but, uh, so my we'll question when is, is uh, so I, actually my, my younger brother is an a MMA artist. He uh, – He's still amateur. He's one and one. He actually uh, holds the uh, light or the organizational record for the fastest knockout for B two with a uh, five second knockout. His biggest problem is he's he wants to go to out some, to find other gyms like bigger gyms like one of your gyms like we uh he still lives in Louisiana. I don't live there anymore. But so Florida's not a far far hike for him. How does somebody that goes from a small gym? kind of integrate themselves into them bigger gyms like how would he go about doing that like i feel like that's a good question for any amateur or any fighter that's trying to branch out and better their game in other gyms like how do you go about that process um when it comes to gyms such as 
uh, I would assume you're talking like American top team, like a, like a mainstream. Exactly. Player. Like I've even, uh, I've even hit them up on Instagram and they don't, they don't respond. Cause I was trying to find out for them. Like, cause I know they had them dorms. I didn't know yeah. if you need to be pro or how that is about going that for housing and stuff. I'm not sure if they brought back the original classes, but after COVID hit American top team shut down all in every class that didn't involve a pro. If you weren't pro, you couldn't go to the gym. So um, what I would do, I was a, I would call the gym because they do have, they do answer the phone. I would call the gym and tell them that you are. He's an he's an amateur still. Yeah, he's a he's one and one as an amateur. Yeah, probably. He's a, so he fought he fought at light heavyweight, but he actually he took that fight on short notice and fought the guy oh, yeah. that knocked him out in five seconds. But he fights at welterweight. Okay. I yeah. The the best thing you could do is call them and say that you have a. He's one and one. As he's a title, right? Uh, no, it was just a. It wasn't a title fight. Just, a, right. just okay. a. Just a record. He's. Oh my! Hey, he might have to get more experience to go. Yeah, to I figured it might be that. I figured most of them probably, probably want you to be a pro or at least have uh like it's, a good amount of amateur experience. But if you're, I mean, that's just saying you're trying to go to a gym like American Top Team. I, American Top Team stands for that, like elite. Like they have the title holders, the professional champions, PFL, one FC, UFC. So they're very prestige, like, like a prestigious yeah, gym. Worth their time. Yeah. I so would about I would your team. As far as your out, team, like exactly. I would seek out gyms like my gym, like Fusion. A smaller hole in the wall gym, as they call it, with providers that come to learn and grow. Like that's I that's how you get better. You Training at a gym like American Top Team is fantastic. Like no, uh, no, no bad talk about it. You're you're gonna get the work in. You're gonna do what you got to do to fight. However, because everyone there is, there's so many people and they're always fighting. You're just always gonna be sparring. You're always gonna be fighting. You're always gonna be hurt. Oh, going 100 percent, going half percent. Good. There's very minimal detail to learning. So you won't get better is kind of like the, the quick answer. Keep your you'll sharp. Just, you'll just know how sharp. you'll know how to fight. You'll know how what it feels like to be in a fight all the time. So if I you already got it, Mike, a, thank you for your time. Sorry, Trace. So if you've already got a high skill set, a place like ATT, it keep you sharp. But if you need to grow a skill set, it's just not a place to go do that. Then Yes. Right on. Wes, go ahead, bud. So I wanted to know, because I know Will brought up your last fight, which was a great performance. Like, do you have, like, mixed feelings about the type of people that you're about to face? So, like, slob offenses, right? Like, it's kind of no secret. With all respect, like, it's takedown offenses is weak area. As a fighter, right, like, approaching that fight, like, in, let's say, previous fights, do you feel did you feel different going there? Like, did you feel like – like, I have a terminology. I say it's WrestleMania season, right? Do you feel like that, right? Like, okay. I got to get – I'm going to get Slava down. Okay, cool. This is good work tonight. Like, did you feel that way? Like, do you have mixed feelings about different fights? No. I I literally train the same for every fight. I just make sure my body is ready to to take damage because people in the UFC are tough. Every single person you fight knows how to wrestle. Some less – some lesser, obviously. Some more. But everybody is there for a reason. They know how to fight. So – uh yeah, um I was told that he had because it was a short notice he was a short replacement and the only thing they told me is that he has lesser wrestling. They didn't say he has bad wrestling. They said he has lesser wrestling. And I was like okay, um if all else fails I can shoot. That's all. That's my that was my response to it. Like I don't I don't go into fights with a plan. I just I know how to fight. I'm gonna fight. Man, I think. Uh... I, I've always said I think that's a great strategy. You can't over plan for a guy. So I would like to uh so you've had a couple fights canceled. Uh Giga, uh okay. Ja Herbert, and Medich, right? Those are all three of your UFC can fights that have been canceled. I think so. Yeah. If yeah. you could get one of them this year, who would you get? Um I don't like cancellations. I can't. I can't make forty-five anymore. 
you just can't do it, huh? Just yeah. not even an option for you no more? Not right now. Bro, did you see the difference in the muscle mass between his last? His, his I know, last yeah, hey, I, I know, know, but I see Conor McGregor eight hundred and fifty <laughs> pounds right now, going to cut down to one fifty five. So you know, yeah, I don't know how anything's possible. I don't um, know. I don't know because, because like, like I said, I don't go out looking for fights. The cancellations I see are just life's kind of lesson or or curse, like not curse. But course about like part they're, of the game. Yeah, they're telling me to go a different direction or to do something else, and I just listen to it. I I listen to when the universe speaks to me, and I do what I'm meant to do when I'm meant to do it. I, I don't. I never seek fights. Again, well, you, I, I don't like fighting, so it, I don't intentionally seek out fights. Well, I just want to tell you that I go to International Fight Week in July every year, and if you just if <laughs> something worked out where you felt like you should fight like Diego Moises or Michael Johnson or Matt Favola or something at International Fight Week, like it'd still be pretty fucking awesome. Trace, go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> that sounds like a good. This that's in July, right? Yeah, it should be July eighth, according to all the paperwork all right. posted on the uh, UFC dot com. All in all, that kind of sounds like a good time for me to get back into the octagon. It's a super late, but the the shit I have going on right now, I feel like I should I should take that time because I'll, I'll be able to be a better fighter by then. But right now, I'm just I feel I feel broken. Like it's just miserable. Man, I'm very sorry to hear that, Mike. Uh, <laughs> People get here. You get, you get here. Bro, you, bro, you put yeah, on one of the most exciting fights of the year against Mason Jones, bro. That was an amazing fight, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Dude, you beat the dog shit so out we... of him. All right, sure. No, he was he, he was definitely fighting back. <laughs> so, uh, do you like so with your t- with your team in general? Like you say, you have like Hall of Famers like Jacques Ray. Do you still get starstruck? No. Um, no. I've never been starstruck before. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Maybe it's, it's just me. <laughs> I just don't see I don't see a reason. That there's just someone that has more time in the game than I do. And I feel like they're a guiding. I mean they can show me in mental clarity and explain to me how it feels to be where they are and what they did to get there, but I have no like you're a superstar to me. You're my teammate now. He's scary looking, though. Jacques, <laughs> Jacques Ray. Hell yeah. All right. Um, well, I, I think we took a little more time than we asked for, and it sounds like we're all running out of rope questions. So I'm not going to hold you here hostage. Yo, I do want to tell you, a though, positive. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yo, hold on, Mike. So you have, like, an injury, or, or if you don't mind me asking? Sorry, you said you, you felt like you were broken. I'm sorry. Um, just in a mental place for me yeah. at the moment. Mental, mental. I I do have injuries as well. Um, an injury that has been nagging me since. Um, I want to say May of last year, and I ignored it for too long to the point where it became a very big problem. So now I am pending either surgery or. We're just kind of weighing my options right yeah, now. Yeah, so question. So does – because the UFC only covers, like, injuries that happen in fights, right? If it's, like, a lagging injury from, let's say, you know, before the UFC or sparring, they don't cover that? Um, if it's not a bad injury, I'm going to tell you. If it's not a bad injury and you can fight with it, go fight with it. If you broke your, your ring finger, who cares? Go fight. It's going to hurt. Just go fight. Because after the fight – You'll cover everything. Okay, interesting. If, yeah, in in fight camp, if you are able to train, and normally, or if the injury you have isn't like going to make you lose the fight, like right now, if I took a fight, I would lose. I know I would because I there's things I cannot do. So, bro, you beat the you beat the brakes off, uh, uh, Boris. Uh, Lava, I don't even want to try to pronounce that guy's name. Borisha. <laughs> Lava Claus. Yeah, bro. It was kind of like amazing how 
that dude trained at Team Alpha Male, and his his wrestling was respectfully just not very good, you know. Like, yeah. I I talked to them about that too. Yeah. I talked to him a lot. So, what what was the deal with that? Did he just not practice the wrestling, or was it he just he just couldn't stop the the takedowns regardless? He said that he ever since the um oh my the the Katsi right? Katsi. No, no, no. The other, the, the red mohawk. Red mohawk. Mark to Casey. Mark to Casey. To Casey. To Casey. To Casey. To Casey. Um, ever since that fight, he said he's been working wrestling nonstop and only training BJJ. And so that was eight months ago before our fight. Interesting. All right. So I got to, I got to interject and I got to say this. We got a, we got a big, we got a chat group that goes deep here. And we talk about all type of topics. And I just want all the dudes in the chat here to take quick note that he just told us that the UFC paid for TJ Dillashaw's shoulder repairs. We yeah. all talked about why that man took that fight. I just want to say oh, we no. all just heard him tell us that. Just I'm not now? putting Mike on the spot. We have, bro, we have just, just debated deeply why TJ took that fight. And as oh, soon as okay. I heard you yeah, say I just, that, I like, just gave you the, the scoop. I'm like, bro, that was an expensive ass surgery. There you go, right there. Like, I don't mean to, I didn't that's mean to not, like say Mike said either. something Mike didn't say. I was not doing that. Just we have debated that deeply. And as soon as you said that, I was like, God damn TJ Dillashaw. Vinny, go ahead. No, no, that see, that's a hundred percent. Because I, like like I said, I took this fight I knowing that this injury was ongoing. It's, it's nagging. It could not prevent me from fighting at the time. Uh, it, it was nagging. It did hurt, but I could fight through it, and I knew I could. So I just took the fight. And now that the fight's over, they're taking care of all of it. Man, I say good on you. Yeah. I mean, I do. I say good on you. No shame about it. Vinny, go ahead. I seen you with your hand up. Yeah, yeah. Time, but... Hey, Mike, I'm a big fan. Um, sorry to hear about you being broken. And that's uh, actually what my question was about. Is uh, You said it was broken because of the mental um uh, mental, uh, a mental thing or whatever you want to call it. Do you think mental is it a is it a bigger deal to 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 deal with Hell mental yeah. stress than to deal with the injury? Do you, I think they're both they both play hand in hand. But if you're referring to like going and fighting with either, yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm referring about you? getting prepared. I mean, mental has a big thing to it. Hey. I, I've seen every one of my teammates cry in the corner in the in the locker room is because of the fight that they have to go and do. So if there's a the mental aspect is big, I probably might be more than physical because if you think you're good, if you know you're good, if you you you're just clear in your head, you can you can go fight. Physical you can have bad cardio, it's okay. One hit punch is over. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think it might be like a sixty forty split, maybe a seventy thirty mental seventy physical. Wow, thing. yeah, that's that's, that's, that's what I thought. I mean, I thought I thought the mental plays a, probably the bigger part of your part of your training than than physical. I mean, physical. You, you, I mean, you get it, it, it get hurt, but I mean at the same time, it's just as uh, rest and 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 uh, you know not taking taking it easy a little bit. But mental man, that's that's like mental digs, mental dig deep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. I've had I've had these weird like mental blocks in my career, and I I know that it's because <sighs> fighting isn't my passion. I know it. No, but uh, no. And I also I also I, I follow a big uh, a big uh, how can I put a diet as far as mental because I know that. You know, <laughs> you know, you know where I'm coming from with this, right? I mean, do you yeah. do you follow a diet as far, as far as far as mental as well? Well, I try to I try to talk, um, a lot. I try to talk to therapists. I try to, and it, it has helped because uh, before the Mason Jones fight, I thought about stopping. I just thought about quitting, and then um, yeah, you could see it in the uh, in the post interview. I was just I thought I was done. I didn't really want to do it anymore. And here I am. I resigned a contract. I got three fights left. Nice. Good for you. Um, thank you. Uh, we're going to yep. see what goes through. And Yeah, so 
See how this year plays out. Yeah, wish you the best of luck, man. Bro, if you don't mind me asking, you said that fighting isn't your passion. So what's your passion, bro? I have no idea. I like I like teaching, uh, but I wouldn't call it a passion. I'm, bro, because I'm just I'm just letting you know right now, like like watching you fight, like you cannot tell that that's not <laughs> your passion. You know, you like you you look like you were born for that shit, man. Like you... yeah, but I don't have the mentality that like Hamza has, where he just. I want to fight. Let's fight tomorrow. Let's fight today. I'll fight him. I'll fight her. Like, it's just... Yeah, no. I don't have that mentality. That's a, that's a fair point, Bo, but, like, you... Like, that fight with Mason, that was literally, like, a fight of the year. Like, it was, like, a... It was, like, on a fight night with in the Apex, so, like, nobody really, like, heard about it, but, like, bro, that, if that fight was, like, in a stadium, <laughs> like, that would have been, like, a fight of the year contender, man. Like, because the passion and grit you had in that fight, bro, you cannot tell that fighting's not your passion, you know? No, I didn't. That's good. I, I like that though. Man, I, still, and... I, just, I just do what I gotta do. You know, people show up for work, put on their hat, and do what they gotta do. Very good at your job, Respect. bro. Andrew, what you got, bud? Gentlemen, how are we doing tonight? I uh, just want to apologize for showing up a little bit late. It's Valentine's Day, so I took my daughter out for a little daddy daughter da- eh, daddy daughter Valentine's date. So I'm ready to roll. Uh, Mike Davis, thank you so much for showing up, man. We greatly appreciate you. Um, I've been in here for about two minutes, and I'm already hearing, like, golden golden tokens, you know what I mean? It's I love that you mentioned that it wasn't your passion because most people in your position wouldn't admit that, you know, given, like, everything that comes with the, with the career. I think it's a good reminder for people that to, to some of you guys, it's just a job just like us. You know what I mean? I think people forget that. And so they think that everyone is just like 100% all in. And I mean, that may or may not be true, but it's a nice reminder to know that you can be really, really good at something and it's still not even your passion. It's just a job. You know what I mean? So I appreciate you mentioning that and being so open and honest. I appreciate the understanding. So all games aside, I just want to tell you, I know you said you don't have you don't watch tape, but if you ever need a group of people to watch tape, we will break <laughs> everything. <laughs> we then do we'll argue fun. about it the entire time too. So when you get it, you'll you'll get the argued answer, <laughs> the okay. debated, the the overstudied. Too many people. All um, right. I'm gonna like, hold you to it. Oh man, uh, man! Anything we could do. Listen. I want to thank you so much for your time tonight. You stayed much longer than I had asked you for. Um, I don't want to put you in a position where you feel like you need to say, hey, I got to get out of here, guys. So I want to thank you so much for your time, bro. I, this was this is our first professional fighter in our space that we got to talk to, bro. And we'll probably oh, talk awesome. about this for a week in our chat group, man. I appreciate I you thank having you me so as the first much. guy. Man, we'll, it's, we'll uh, never forget our first Mike. Don't you worry about it. And, uh, and listen, don't we're gonna be on you again, and you're gonna be like, Man, these guys again, as soon as you win a fight or get a fight, we're gonna be like, Get him back, get him back, get him back. Just be prepared. <laughs> I want you to know. I'll be there, Mike. Thank you so much, bro. Um, really, really, thank you. Of course, I appreciate you guys having me on. I really do. Yeah, Mike, and I hope you get everything gets worked out, your mental, your your body, everything, brother. I hope you get it all lined out. Cause it will. I, we I, here I for believe, you, brother. We here for I you, I believe man. everything will happen happens for a reason. And, you know, I'm just – I'm kind of – I'm picking through my life, seeing what's going on and why. I'm just – I'm figuring it all out. I'm not sad. I mean, I'm happy. I'm living. I'm traveling every other week right now. So I'm, I'm living my life. And that's what people don't understand about fighters is my life isn't fighting. I'm going to go – and live. I have to live too. So, chilling. Well, I'll go well, fish him, brother. Yeah, in just just like a little side comment because I think it's it's literally so fascinating what you're saying because like GSP basically said the same thing. He said that he like literally hates fighting, but he's so he was so good at it. Like he was so gifted, and he was like such a you know popular marketable fighter. But he said when it was actually time to fight, he literally hated fighting. He said that he loved the training, but it's so yeah. yeah. I'm pretty. I'm pretty much exactly in that mindset. At the end of the day, uh, isn't that supposed to be the true mis- mixed martial artist's mindset, isn't it? You're not supposed to want to go fight. You're just supposed to, if you're put in that situation, be able to. 
Am I, yeah. am I right? I suppose so, yeah. Well, so, like, I don't mean that. I sound dumb or, or anything, but like, so I have five kids, right? And my kids all do sports, right? And there comes a point where most things that my kids wanted to do at some point, we just signed them up and they did it recreational. But there will come a point in anything you do where it's like, okay, so you're going to actually go do this or there's not really anything left to teach you. Fighting's got to be the same way. When you go to the gym every day and you learn, eventually your coach has got to look at you and say, okay, man, it's time to fight. Like, what are we teaching you for? So I'm sure it comes natural whether you were prepared for it or not. If you just love to train, I'm sure it's just that's, a natural that's how path. My, my fight came into play because I never planned to fight. When I started training MMA, the guys I was training with signed me up for um, a short-notice replacement fight for a title. And they didn't tell me until the week of. Really? Like some buddies telling you, oh, by the way, you got yeah. a fight coming up. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. That's that's a great I was, story. I was so scared. I didn't, I didn't understand. I was so afraid. Man, uh, you won that fight, obviously, because yeah. <laughs> we know you only got two losses. So, I mean, they put you in a good path. I mean, regardless of whether or not fighting is your passion and you find something else. I mean, look at Ray L, man. He's a hell of a, a real estate agent. Reg- like right hear. now, I'm I'm building into content and like uh, gaming stuff. And I like this because I'm, I'm a nerdy kid. I like technology. Oh, so, yeah. I did see your setup. It was pretty sweet. So, yeah, I, I deal with this all day when I'm not doing fighting. But even with doing this, I'm, I'm about to start getting paid for it. So um, do you have any anywhere that like you're talking about where people could follow you? Are you on Twitch or something? Yeah, I'm uh, Mike Davis UFC on Twitch. Oh, that's easy to find. Yeah. I got. I'll tell my kids. And I, I stream with uh, Jens a lot, so we'll be Jens Balver. Yeah, that was an awesome moment for him. So your buddies with him, that was a great yeah, moment yeah. for him, huh? Yeah, super, super good. I was on, I was on the chat with him while it happened. Man, and listen, bro, he's going to be at International Fight Week to get into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I'm so probably, like, if regardless were... if, I, if I fight or not, I'll probably go out there. <laughs> I'm like just said, smiling. That, that fight, I'm just giving you a hard time, bro. That's a good, that's a good day for me. It, it might be. I just got to see what the requirements I need are for this. In January, we started a chat group dedicated strictly to people trying to figure out when International Fight Week is, what the plans are. <laughs> what it includes. So before anything was announced, we dissected a contest on UFC.com that hasn't even been announced yet and found the date and the fine print. Like We're way <laughs> over the top about it, bro. So that's why. You guys I are on it. it. Yeah, dude, you guys would be the perfect ones to send my next my next bout to. Bro, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> we uh, we uh, over the top with this stuff, you know. Everybody does something, right? I we all got jobs, and this is what we love to do. Um, man, Aussie fan joined really late, and I know I said bye, but they put their hand up. No, no, you're good. I'm, I like I said, I'm just chilling. Aussie Once I get off of this, I'm just gonna go lay down. So, gotcha. Yeah, good night, mate. I'll just, uh, I will let you go. I just wanted to say, uh, real quick, man, it was really interesting here and such an honest. Uh, opinion from a fighter and, and really, you know, saying what's on your mind, it's pretty rare. And, um, you know, I think you sound like a smart guy, no matter what uh, happens. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of great fights in the future. And uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, fight soon, mate. Get yourself ready, get yourself right. You <laughs> sound like you're not going to be one of these dickheads that's going out and buying $5,000 watches and no. begging for the next fight when you're not ready. So keep doing what you're doing, brother, and uh, good luck for the future. I appreciate that so much. Thank you so much. Sounds like you're doing a good, pretty job, man. I'd love to go traveling every two weeks, man. That sounds good. I am. I'm super smart when it comes to money. I'm just a smart kid. I don't know why. That's, that's another reason why I don't know I'm fighting. <laughs> I'm so smart. It's dumb. They, they, they don't even <laughs> they don't even make note of that because like they always make note of like Joe Lozon being super smart. He's that nerdy guy that would kill you, bro. You smart. Graduate <laughs> at sixteen, bro. You smart as hell. And like you're super humble, bro. That's like that's a huge thing. Like, good on you, bro. You're a good dude, man. Like, Thank huge you. fan, huge fan. I'm fucking stupid sitting here at eleven fifteen, and we still haven't even talked to fight yet. <laughs> no, we right. haven't talked to fight yet. Uh, I love you, Mike. Have a good night. Let's right. rock. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Mike, thank, thank you, brother. No problem. Uh, all right. 
Man, that was absolutely awesome. I think we lost a little bit of it in the recording because I had to switch devices around, but I'll try to piece together what we did get and get it put on the YouTube channel anyway. Um, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. That was an awesome interview, man. Hopefully we get him back. Hopefully uh, he gets a fight. I, I am a fan of Mike's. I think uh, I think he's a great fighter. So um, that was an awesome interview. We should have had him plug his uh, his own stuff. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of wanted to interject at the last second, but you know what? I think I think everyone knows everyone knows where to find him. Yeah, I asked, that's guys. why I asked Get about the Twitch. Twitch. You know, I typed, sure. it, I typed it in the chat though for us. It's like Mike Davis on Twitch, UFC on <laughs> Twitch. Yeah, Mike Davis UFC on Twitch. Yeah, I, I, I literally typed it in our chat, our group chat. Mike, nice. Davis, Mike, Davis, Mike Davis, UFC on Twitch. We'll get it. Um, Marin, you got a card up in front of you, bro? Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> just wanted to say before we get going that um, just wanted to thank you, Joe, for getting him on and everything. That was so cool. Um, like like you're saying, like, I mean, I was a fan of him before. Now with everything that he said and I, like how Trace is saying, so humble he is, his answers were just so pure and like legit. It's, it's straight up, honestly, super cool. Man, so I don't I don't ever speak ahead and I'll just leave it very, very simple. But I will say we do have uh I do have and I Trace does too actually. Uh we have DMs going with a couple more UFC fighters that have indicated that they will make the space in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully we can get guys in here fairly regularly. Um Mike gave the page a follow, which was really cool. So um yeah, I don't I know. Do, I, uh, hopefully hey. Hey Joe, how'd you get him? Who knows him? I did. I just DM'd him, cool. bro. <laughs> you just DM'd him, and he decided to come. Yeah. So we're not gonna we're not gonna give away too much, but we've been able to line up a few things for for the next coming weeks. So oh, um, yeah, I don't want to. It's not not give it away. I just don't want to say it and it don't happen. You look oh, like okay. ass, right. bro. I don't. That's why we're not posting shit ahead of time because we don't want to put something out and. Him cancel and they look like an asshole, or we look like assholes. Yeah, we don't, we don't want to burst our bubbles. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. We... Was it in the chat at any point that Mike Davis was gonna get on? Because I'm yeah, I'm not bro, active. and the tweets. Joe posted Vinny, out yesterday. Vinny, Vinny, Vinny is the goat, not posted man. one yesterday. Vinny Jeez. is the goat, man. Vinny is like a fucking Oprah, man. He's the goat. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I should have me like about to cry or something. Vinny had that getting deep, man. <laughs> Come on, That's man. Crazy. I I just hey, I just uh, know one got... thing, man. Mentally, I mean, I I know that. Um, I mean, I'm the oldest guy in the, probably in the chat over here, but I mean, I know that if you don't eat right, your mental state, man, is it breaks down so easily. They next you you're lost, man. It's, it's like you're in the fucking hey, clouds. Vinny. Hey, Vinny, just want to say that I, work uh, out. I did agree with you, and I was going to say something on that, like, because that is so fucking true. I've been through that, especially, like, these past few months where, like, especially on the weekends where I just let it go and I start drinking soda or chips. Dude, that shit fucking kills you. Yeah. You no. feel like yo, more Yo, all I got to say to that, guys, is just work out, bro. I promise you. Just work out. No, but but also. No, like, man. I, I mean, working, out, working like, out is good for like, your body, but mentally. Working out is not, uh, mentally yeah. working out is only going to help so much compared to what you eat, because if you're eating oils, you're yeah. eating shit that's going to cloud your mind. I mean, that's that's why old people lose their mind because of all the shit they've been eating. All you know, I mean, that's the worst of advice I have for everybody. Eat, eat, eat. I mean, you can eat your food that you like, like pizza, cheeseburgers, whatever you want, but also eat right. You know. So, all right, boys, we're uh. We're already like way behind because of Mike Davis, and we're no, 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 don't we're, say we're, we're behind because of Mike. No, Davis. no, we're, we're behind thanks to our no, 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 interview no. with Mike Davis. Due to our pleasurable guest, we yes. are already behind, and this is a fight uh, podcast. We do so let's break get it going. Fights. Uh, Marin, you got this card up in front of you, bro. Wait, Andrew, what's up? Yes, I do. I've been having it up. Uh, yeah, Andrew, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to say what's up to my guy Rob. Jay Speck, the host, he runs his own shit. He'll tell you a little bit later, but I just wanted to give the guy some love. Man, it's nice to see Jay Speck active again. He was uh, not active for a little while. Yeah. Yo, 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 what's up? What's happening, Rob? Joe, good, bro. Uh, yeah, I at the end of the last year, I took a little, I took a little wandering off into the real world. 
for a little bit, but I'm back and I'm so glad to be here. I also, I'm super sorry that I missed your interview process, but I'm going to go listen to it. Obviously, obviously when you finish, I can go back and listen to your interview and what you got to do. I just want to say great stuff, man. And I'm really uh, happy for your, you know, first fighter guest. And I know that this is just the tip of the iceberg and it's going to go a long way. You're going to have shit tons more. And you're, you, I, Basically, dude, I've had the privilege of getting to see your evolution, and I am fucking all for it, dude. I love it. I love the show. I love what you do. I love all these people in this room because I, I want to. I want. I just want to run down the aisle and stick up. I, I want to do like a cool UFC fighter where he sticks up both hands and everybody's shaking his hand. You know what I mean? Like everybody. <laughs> That's what I want to do in this room right here. But uh, I, I know you're behind schedule, so I just wanted to say hi and uh, that's what's up. Glad to have you, Rob. Marin, what you got?